and a good spiritual morning to you once again. I'm Father Cosmas. I'm Father Michelle. Thanks for joining us today. <laughs> what was that? For a quick chat and our morning cups of coffee. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for having me with you, you again today. You sounded just tired. Are you tired? I am tired. <laughs> Who um, isn't? Yeah, right. We all are. Um, <laughs> So for today, we thought, well, a, a couple weeks ago, we did a video on school shootings. We referenced the school shooting yeah. that took place recently in Georgia. And then we had a little drama close to home because in our school system, there was a little bit of threat yeah. via social media about some school shootings. Yeah. And they actually caught a suspect. Yeah, thank you to the police and everybody who did that. And um, yes, yeah, so that threat has been... Um taken care of pretty. neutralized yeah. is that what they say i don't know how they i didn't want it. to be all technical yeah i, I know i'm sorry um but so it got us thinking about you know that there's drama there's always drama in the yeah. schools and it's amazing to see, you know we've got kids in elementary school in middle school junior high school yeah. and of course in college and beyond so the idea of there being drama especially in mid you know middle school yeah. or junior high school i should say junior high school or middle school what is it middle school out here yeah, it's called it's middle, middle school. school. It's not junior high. You L I went to, LA I, I went to junior high school yeah. because it was 9, 10, 11. No, what was it? it was you were 7, 8, 9. 7, 8, 9. And then high school was 10, 11, 12. So I was in junior, junior yeah. high. Walter Reed, junior high school, I think. Shout out. Same high school that some famous people probably went yeah. to in the Valley in LA. But anyway, yeah, there's so always drama in yeah. school. And, and obviously we're talking about, there was a heightened drama. This is everyday drama. Everyday drama. That Whenever we, yeah, we talk to our daughter, how yeah. is school drama today, yeah. dad? Okay. So, and you're in the school. So now what, what, what's the drama? So what I'm realizing is that I didn't, it's neat to have a, you're behind the scenes now. You're not just a parent with a child in school. Right. You're on campus. Why are so more girls than boys are fighting on campus? Yeah, I hear so that. So many girls are fighting. When my, my daughter says that, another fight today. I'm like, yeah. oh, what were the boys' names? Not boys, girls. Yeah. And so I'm remembering when I was in school, Yeah. boys fought, Yeah. you know, because we were animals. Girls yeah. just destroyed each other mentally With and emotionally. <laughs> right? Because wow. girls are vicious, absolutely vicious. <laughs> uh, but now the girls are, they're swinging. They're, it's they're, hard. It's more fighting. than half. It's more than, I don't know what the percentage is, but for us at at our campuses, I'm on two different middle school campuses. It's more than half our girls fighting. So why, why are they so bold and full of so much? They've just got things well, in their just, pocket to say. I mean, okay. They've yeah. learned to express their negative emotion yes. physically um, with, yes. with aggression. There's always been aggression. Mm -hmm. They just, like I said, it used to be through gossip and just tearing people down. Yeah. Um, but just you know this idea of how there's drama and how we sort of, just as human beings, right? We gravitate toward drama. It's exciting. Right. We well, yeah. sometimes we we look Not for Not for it. the person being, you know, confronted, but no. <laughs> no, no, it's never fun for the, you know, for that person, but I I mean I just think it, it, in general, yeah. we kind of like, we like the drama. And, and I, I mean, passerbys too, you know, the sort of rubberneck syndrome, sort of like, well, we got it. There's a fight. Let's go see what's going on. Mm -hmm. Cause you kind of just want to know you have that sort of um, instinct in you just to sort of see what's going to happen. But I mean, just in general, in our relationships, you know, we, we always sort of become very dramatic in our relationship. I mean, these girls are learning this behavior somewhere. And the boys too. We're not picking on the and girls. And they're We're twelve just... and thirteen years old. Right. They're learning they're to be young. dramatic. They're learning to sort of gravitate toward this. I mean, they're obviously learning it somewhere. You can yeah, argue. So how, what are we displaying at home? Well, yeah. I mean, you can argue that they're learning it from YouTubers and influencers and and on the internet. I don't see a lot of that. Um, I think they're learning it, like you said. I think it's being modeled, and they're learning it from their parents at home. Not that their parents are teaching them to, you know, do martial arts and and. <laughs> UFC fighting, just that parents are teaching aggression and resolve the aggression and drama and confrontation. Maybe let's start shifting away from the word drama yeah, toward right. okay. confrontation and how we handle confrontation yeah. as adults. Because being in parish life, you see confrontation all the time. The, you always see people mixing and in people, some get along and they're great friends. Some people, they don't get along so well because yeah. you have all these different personalities, hundreds of people. They're not all going to get along. There's yeah. going to be certain people that just don't like each other. Just like I know there's a lot of them, you know, they don't like me just because <laughs> not everybody can like everybody. So how do you handle the confrontation and sort of like withdraw yourself from the drama 
and the confrontation because it's never spiritually a healthy thing right to do right it's never spiritually healthy i'm forgetting which saint i, I want to say it's saint john of the ladder he says something like run from that run from confrontation mm -hmm. as if you're running from fire as if you're fleeing from a wildfire yeah. there's that idea that nothing good is going to come out of that situation if you know you're putting yourself in a position where you're going to have an exchange and it's a, a bad exchange like what would we tell these girls just walk away Right. It's what we would say. Yeah, it's hard, though. It, I mean, I read a quote today. That's interesting that you said that. I read a quote today that said that the devil rejoices in fighting and Christ rejoices in forgiveness. There you and go. I thought, so the devil's like they're egging us on saying, yeah, destroy your fellow man. Right. Like, that's, whether it's words or not, but it's or fists. Yeah. Um, well, that's exactly by definition what the devil is. Right. The, okay. the Greek word for devil is diabolos. Right. Yeah. And so diabolos comes from the verb diavalo, which literally means to put one person against another person. Oh, okay. So by definition of the name of diabolos in Greek, it's a person that pits people against each other. Welcome to middle school. Right. Yeah. He's, you know, he sets up the fights. Right. He's the ringleader. He sets yeah. up the fights and puts them in the cage and says, okay, go. And so we want to withdraw from that in our spiritual life. We see a situation where, okay, if I get in that, if I'm putting myself in this situation, if I enter that conversation with that person, if I sit at that table, there's a chance that this is not going to be, you know, pleasant. It's not going to go down a good path. It's sort of like, how do I just walk away? How do I avoid that? And once I start getting into it too, yeah, how do I, how do I extricate myself? Right? It's it's already yeah. started. I can't tell you how many times people take pot shots, right? They don't. They, oh, we all they, take pot shots at each they other. They take pot shots. It's it's like it's like a drive by. A left handed compliment. Left handed compliment. Kids passive do that aggressive a lot. Yeah. things, you yeah. know. And you get yeah. that all the time as a priest. I'll get that. I'll be walking through coffee hour with my cup of coffee, and this is just a zinger. It's like just a pot shot. Yeah. As you, it's like okay, I can stop and engage in that and end up going down a very bad path, or I can just sort of smile and and laugh it off and say it's not worth it. You know, and just and just yeah. move on. Say, so, you know what? Have a beautiful day and move on. And I think young kids love to do that, too, because they feel like they can walk by and keep walking and say something just nasty with a smile on their face. And they just destroy the person that they're talking to. Sure. And then that girl or boy, you know, it's just it's it's hard. Yeah. No matter if you're 12 or you're 50. I was going to say, I don't think that's specific it, it doesn't, to it young people. Yeah, I, I, I was going to say, it's, I feel like that's, uh, yeah. yeah, that's all ages. And we have to be but careful it's of hard. that. Like, how do you as a Christian, how do you, how are you strong and yet kind? Because you don't want to sure. be a pushover. You don't want to no, just be don't. the person who has to take it. Every well, time. I think that's the difference. You don't. But, so that when that happens to me anyway, I don't go and stand there and just take a beating. Um, I also keep moving, but I also don't, you know, you don't return fire. I suppose that's oh. what it would be. You get shot at, okay. just don't return fire. So the rock and the cotton ball? Yeah. You want to explain that statement? Well, remember we talk, they talk about that in relationships, right? It's one person is the stone and one person might be the cotton. So if you have two stones, they spark. They make sparks. Yeah. If one person is hard, yeah. like a rock, yeah. you can't have two people being harsh and then constantly bickering because then they bang against each other. There's sparks and there's yeah. fire. One person has to be. In Greek, we say the Petra and the Babaki. One person has to be the cotton ball, someone yeah. soft. So yeah, in all relationships, yeah. it, try to be the cotton ball. Try to be the person that's sort of just, okay, yeah. no big deal. Yeah, they're just, maybe they're having a bad day. I'm not going to take it first. And you know what? There's strength in that. Honestly, there's weakness in sort of taking everything to heart and being overly sensitive and saying, oh my gosh, wait, what did you say? How could you? Because yeah. if you don't care, you know, if it's just sort of a, you know, you're just... <laughs> If you're just <laughs> flicking the fly, it was like, oh, okay, you said that, no big deal. Yeah. That's where the strength is. It's strength in yourself to know they think that I'm fine. I don't have to. Why do I care what they think? I'm not worried about that. Yeah, you and know, for, if that's what you think, that's okay. And, and just, for us and our children, not to let it wreck you. Well, and to teach our that's, children and yeah. our grandchildren that yeah. as we're sending them off to school, yeah. uh, you know, sort of like for them to be strong in themselves, it doesn't mean that they know how to you know, punch and fight and use their fists. They know how to be confident in who they are. So when someone does say something to provoke them or yeah. to be mean, they know how to take a step back and say, I don't care what you think. Great. That's what you think. Who cares? And I'm going to live my life. Yeah. And I think that that for us as Orthodox, having those boundaries and sort of just trying to be a good Christian, not, not engaging, not returning fire, not someone says a left-handed compliment or something that's passive aggressive and they're trying to, you know, zing you or egg you on. 
you just let it go, let it roll off your back and say, hey, you know what? I hope you have a great day. Hope you're doing well and just keep on moving. And that's, I think, the most important thing. We want to avoid the drama. We, we want to avoid the confrontation. And in that way, we're imitating Christ because whenever I have a hard time, I always remember, you know, Christ being accused and not answering. Remember Pontius Pilate oh. says, you know, this is this, is, and Christ is silent. And he says, you're, you're not going to answer me. Don't you know I have the power to release you or crucify you? Like there's silence even in the example of Christ. And then the saints imitate that. Yeah. I think St. John Maximovich, right? When he's going through the difficulty oh. with the cathedral and the lawsuits, there's people spitting at him. He doesn't, what does he do? He doesn't attack them or return <laughs> the insult. He just knows Gentle. that this yeah. is the way that it is and moves on. And that's, I think, how we can imitate Christ and grow in Christ and do that each and every day.